In this video, I'm gonna show you how simple it is to 3D engrave these brass coins. I'll also tell you who this coin is for, why I made it, and I've got some special bonus information about selling the items that you make. You need two things for this to work. First of all, you need the Galvo edition of Lightburn, and that brings us to the second thing you need, you need a fiber laser. The laser I'm using today is the Monport GI30. It is a 30 watt MOPA fiber laser, and full disclosure, Monport did send this unit to me for testing for free. They haven't asked for a review and they haven't paid me for it. They just asked that I use it in some how-to videos. And you all know I love my how-to videos. So that's what we're gonna do. We are in Lightburn and this is set up with the Galvo license and my GI30. But we can't just slap a design down and go at it. There's a couple steps we need to do. The first thing you need is you're going to need a 3D image. Well, more like a 2.5D image in the form of an STL. So if you're unfamiliar with STL, those are files that are often used in 3D printing or CNC to generate a 3D image. If you are a designer and you wanna make your own, you could use something like Blender or even Fusion 360 to generate the STLs that you want to use. However, if you're like me and you're not a great designer and you wanna find something, I got a pro tip for you. Etsy's not the pro tip. The pro tip is what to search for because if you just search for like brass coin engraving laser file, you're gonna get a lot of free done stuff. And you might find here and there, like for example, this is a 3D illusion, but it's still not what we're looking for. So here's the pro tip. Search for 2.5D CNC STLs and you will get all of these wonderful results that work in the way that we need them to. Now I bought this STL because I'm not a great designer and I really wanted something that sort of captured the spirit of making and DIY that the members of my community have. I bought this one and this is what we're gonna use today. Thing is, we can't just slap the STL into light burn. We have to take an extra step here. So what we need to do is we need to use this thing called an STL to PNG converter. There's a bunch of them out there. This is the one I'm using. I will leave a link to this in the description. So I simply upload my file here and it is going to automatically convert it into a PNG. And it looks this way because what it's doing, it's converting it to a grayscale depth map, basically. So the brighter it is, the, the higher up in the image it is, and the darker it is, the further down it is. And Lightburn can use this information. Once we've got it, you will click download, and then you're gonna go over to Lightburn. Okay, back in Lightburn. Now there is one step I wanna take before I import my image, and that is I wanna set up a tool frame. So I'm gonna click the T1, I'm gonna grab a circle, and hold shift so it's even. And I know that the inner diameter where I want to engrave is 37 millimeters. So I'm gonna set this circle to 37 millimeters with the selection tool. And this selected, I'm gonna press the P key and that will automatically center it in my grid for me. What I wanna do is get that image inside of the circle. So let me bring in my image by, sorry, my cats, get out of your cat. I'm trying to record. Go away, go away. Nobody wants to see your butt. Got my circle here. Let me import my STL. And you can see it is way too big. So I'm just going to grab a corner. I'm going to drag it down, hit P to position that in the center, and then sort of repeat this process until it is the size that I need. So now I've got this centered up and you can see it's outside the circle though. So what we're going to do, I'm going to turn off output. I'm going to select, I'm going to turn off show for a second. I'm going to select my tool layer click show and then holding shift, I'm gonna select this as well. So they should both be selected. I'm going to go to tools, apply mask to image and now it gets rid of all that excess outside. So I can turn on output now and you will see my nice dark image here. And then we're gonna go into the settings. Now this is already set up. Everything is already set up in here. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time. Speed for this 30 watt MOPA fiber laser, I found 1575 millimeters per second works great at 90% power. And if you're new to light fiber lasers, you're gonna see two settings here you've not seen before in light burn, and that is frequency and cue pulse width. We're not diving into those today, all right? Just know that for brass, what I found works best is 46 kilohertz and 200 nanoseconds. And then I'm setting my line interval to 0 0.0250. And most importantly, the image mode is set to 3D sliced. Down here, we have number of passes. Now, a grayscale image has 256 levels of gray. So to get the full depth and the full resolution, you would set this to 256. 
However, on my laser, when I set this to 256 for this image, it takes two hours and 15 minutes to engrave one side. And I'm impatient. So I've reduced the resolution and the depth by dropping this down to 64, and I get it done in about a little over 30 minutes. So keep in mind, you can go much deeper than I'm going to in this video by increasing the number of passes, or like me, if you want to save time and give up a little bit of resolution, drop the passes down. That's all set. Hit OK. All right, next thing we're going to do, I'm going to select my image. I'm going to copy. I'm going to paste it, slap it back in the middle. Then I'm going to click on a different layer, which I already have set up for my cleanup pass. I'm going to turn off output and turn off show and turn off output and turn off show because I want to do the same thing I just did. I'm going to grab the circle, click show, hold down shift, grab this, tools, mask to image. There might be a faster way to do this. If you know a faster way to do this when I duplicate, when you duplicate it to keep the mask, let me know down in the comments. It is set and ready to go. So now we can show both of them again. So now I have two images. I have one on what I call my deep pass layer. The deep pass is what's going to get down into the coin and do my 3D engraving. The cleanup pass is what's going to happen afterwards to make it nice and shiny again, or well, shinier than it is. So my cleanup pass, I have the speed set up the same. Power is 35%. My frequency though is 75 kilohertz. Same Q pulse width. Everything else is the same except my number of passes. And actually, I'm going to set this to one because I don't want too much cleanup. With a lower resolution, the more cleanup passes I do, the more detail I can, I can lose. So I'm just going to set it to one. And then that's good to go. Hit OK. All right. Everything is set up and ready to go. Now I've got my deep pass layer. I've got my cleanup layer. The next thing I need to do, let's get the coin on the laser. And I'll show you how to get this lined up with the laser and using light burns framing. Just a quick interruption to let you know, when I recorded the setup and light burn, I set it up doing the front of the coin. And then I goofed and I recorded the back of the coin being engraved and set up on the laser. So you're going to see in the next section, the back of the coin, which does not look at all like the front of the coin. I just didn't want you all to be confused because I goofed a little bit. Anyhow, let's get on with the lasering. When I click on framing, you will see we got some wonkiness going on here. It's like all over the place. So what I like to do is turn on tool layers only. And now you'll see I've got this red ring here. This is the inner ring that corresponds to the orange tool path, which fits just inside of my coin here. So now I can use that inner ring to adjust and line up. Now, this is one thing with the Galva version of Lightburn. If you try and click start, it's going to bring up the framing. No matter what you do, there's no way of getting around the framing. So I like to go back in tool layer, just double check. It looks good. Start. It's going to take a second to vector to rasterize the vectors. At the beginning of the video, I said I would explain who this coin is for and why I made it. I have a program called the Maker's Business Blueprint where I teach makers like you how to market and sell what they make. And I have several members in that program who have had $1,000 months where they have sold over $1,000 worth of their products in a single month after they started my program. And I thought it'd be really cool to make them a little memento. So I have designed and made these coins that I will be sending to my members who have had a thousand dollar month. And they don't know about this. So maker, uh, so members, if you're watching this, surprise. If you are interested in selling what you make, unfortunately, my membership is currently closed right now. But if you want to learn more about it and get on the waiting list, I'll have a link down in the description. You can go check that out. Now, don't worry if you don't have a fiber laser yet. If you already have another laser and you're looking to make some money, I got you covered. Check out my playlist up here of different ways that you can make money with your laser. Thanks for watching, everybody.